Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is James. This is Griffin GFX and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create this crazy text effect. So I've got a little document up here full of artwork that I like using this kind of style. It's not all text. You can see some of it's more image based. So I guess the best way of kind of summarizing it is it's like this oversaturated RGB kind of glitch effect. There's lots of warping. There's lots of melting. It reminds me of liquid. Uh, you kind of imagine yourself as being in this empty space lots of kind of uh texture effects being wrapped over the top i think it's really really cool i've seen it kind of starting to gain popularity on social medias but i couldn't find a tutorial for it and i guess the reason being how different every single example is there's no real way of showing you guys how to create this so instead i'm going to be picking a few different styles some of my favorite ones and then showing you guys how to recreate those here you can see that i've done a few of my own I've just typed tutorial. Uh, I really like this one. It looks like the text is kind of on fire. Maybe it's being boosted up. It looks kind of like a rocket with the flames uh, and then the blue bits are really refreshing. Uh, I'll be providing you with all the textures that I've used as well. You can see there's this kind of plastic wrap on top. Everything's going to be in the description, guys. My videos are completely free to watch and get involved with. I'm always providing you with downloads. So if you do like it, if it has helped you, drop a like. You know, that's your way of supporting me. Drop a like, subscribe if you're new. Anyway, without any further ado, let's get get straight into how to make this crazy rgb glitch warp text effect i'm sure the title is going to be a bit cleaner than that i still don't know exactly what to call this but yeah let's get into it guys Yo, okay so the first thing you're going to want to do is go file new and create your document i'm going to start working with 1920 by 1080 because this is the size of my monitor it's also the size of a youtube standard video so it's a good scale to work on um i'm going to start there but i'm actually going to use the canvas crop tool i'm going to hold Alt and shift and just make it bigger this is so that it's still the same scale if i want it to be smaller then i've always got it at the right size but if i ever want it bigger you can't make it bigger unless you start bigger so that's why i'm doing that you're going to want to fill the background with black and i'm going to go to my plastic texture wraps and i'm going to pull out number one this will be in the description if you don't have anything like this feel free to go and grab mine i just found it on the internet somewhere uh, I'll try and credit the original person if I can find their name. So the next thing you want to do is use the curves tool up here. This is on the adjustments panel. Press on that and then right click and turn it into a clipping mask so that it attaches itself to the image underneath. Now what you're going to want to do is find this line. I'm going to work on this bottom quarter here, bottom left quarter. And I'm going to drag it down until we have it very nice and dark so that just these little light bits are showing. You know, this creates the effect of texture without it being really overwhelming. Because if we look at what we started with, it's like this. This isn't nice, but this here is really nice. So now we're going to want to find the center of our document. How we're going to do that is by pressing Ctrl and R. This brings up your rulers. If you then click on the ruler and start dragging down, you're going to find one of these lines. And this is just going to snap for you when it's right in the middle. You'll feel it like connect. And then you want to do it from the left as well. Clip that into the middle. And here we have the center of our document. I hope you can't hear that noise, it's just kicked in. I have a fan in my computer that's going crazy. So now I'm going to type out some text. I'm using this font, it's called Coco Goose Pro. So the first thing you're going to want to do with your text is duplicate it and hide the original text. It's important to always keep that original text in case you ever need to use it. Now with this, what I'm going to want to do, I don't want it to be italics, but unfortunately this font seems to only be italics. So I'm just going to use uh, control shift and alt and I'm gonna oh right the Photoshop controls have changed I've recently moved to a newer version of Photoshop and all everything that I know has changed okay so it's control and shift currently for me that just takes it and makes it a normal font this is what I want I like this font I think that looks really cool so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna see what it looks like in capitals actually okay that actually looks even harder in my opinion so now I'm gonna rasterize that and I'm going to duplicate that and then hide that again like I did before just so I have it if I need it. Put that right in the middle. Now I'm going to think about my colour. I've typed out Hellboy so I think it makes sense to be red. So let's go ahead and make it nice and red. That's a really nice red actually. This effect straight away just makes things look nice. Everything looks like it's supposed to be there. Very artistic. Um, so I'm going to rasterize that. I'm going to duplicate the layer. And on the layer underneath I'm going to go to blending options. And I'm going to make it a nice warm orange. And then I'm just going to, with my arrow key, move that to the right like that. 
I'm going to duplicate that and this time I'm going to go to the left and so you can see it poking out at the left. And for this one, maybe let's go yellow. Just like that, I'm going to rasterize both of these layers together. I'm talking about both of these ones, not the original text. And with these ones, I'm going to blur them with the Gaussian blur by about 7.2 pixels. If your canvas size is different to mine, then just work out whatever looks like this. You know, I don't want it to be too blurred, but I like this kind of blur like this. So let's go for that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge this with the Hellboy text. Or am I actually? Normally I would do that, but I've just been thinking how similar this red is to this orange. And that might cause a problem when I'm doing the effect that I'm going to do. So before that, I'm actually going to go into the blending options and I'm going to add a little glow around this text. You can lift your size up, something like that. You can change the choke depending on how extreme you want it to be. That looks pretty cool. Change the opacity slightly, it doesn't have to be that extreme. And if you make the color, instead of being white, if you make it slightly like an orange or a yellow, then you're gonna realize it looks a little bit more fitting than white. So something like that, really low key, but it just makes it look like it's glowing a little bit. I like that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and merge these layers. So now you should have everything on one layer. My text is looking like this. It really doesn't matter what your text looks like at this point. This is just the outcome that I've come to. So obviously if you're not doing something hell related, maybe pick some other colors. I'll link you some of the artwork like this that I really like so that you guys can kind of get a feel for the kind of things that you can create. If you need some help being creative, you know, you need some inspiration, that's cool. So now that we've got our text, the first thing that I'm going to show you, this isn't necessarily the effect that I'm going to make, but I'm going to show you the liquify tool. That's how you make all the melting and warping type stuff. So you want to go filter and liquify. And if you use this tool in the top left corner, which is called the forward warp tool, you can drag things around. This is really nice. So let's get a nice big brush. My pressure's on hundred, which means my brush is very powerful. If I lower my pressure, then not as much happens when I click it. This is useful for if your image is quite complex and you need to make detailed moves. But when you're on 100, you have a really powerful brush. Um, so you can do things like, I could grab this and just start pulling this down like that. And then I can do it the same over here like that. And then if you want to change the direction, you could have it all of a sudden going like that, and then like that, and then like that, and then like that and you could pull this down and then you could lift this up like that and then you could pull that down like that and then you could start twisting it by going back and forth like that so like you can do anything with this effect as you can see the world is your oyster within liquify there's another effect which i really like and it's this one it's called the twirl clockwise tool now this one's crazy if you have your pressure up high, it goes mental. So you can lower your pressure, do whatever you want, but effectively this twists your image. It's really, really cool. If, when you learn how to use this and you start finding out that there's patterns, it's not as simple as it just twists the hell out of my text until you can't read it. If you actually learn it, you can see what I'm doing here. Like as I'm pulling it, I'm moving my warp tool and kind of saving the image and bringing it back. You know, you can end up with really, really crazy effects. You might see on some of these, some of the text effects like this one, for example, it looks so random and fluid. It doesn't look like someone's done that with their hand. That's because realistically, they've probably gone and gotten the liquify tool and they've just pulled it around like this until something mad's happened, you know? The more you do it, the more things happen like that like if someone showed you that and said create this you probably would have no idea how to but with enough time fiddling around with the liquify tool you might get something similar um, that's what i love about this effect it's really like not recreatable you know everything's unique it looks really really clean but anyway what i'm going to be showing you firstly is this effect here so let's go and create something like that now this works because it's very very crisp there's no color um, kind of blurs so let's see if it works with this effect so i'm going to duplicate and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to really stretch out this image like that that looks pretty cool I'm now gonna go ahead and throw a motion blur on it just to help it a little bit. So we'll go for something like that. I like that a lot. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of a drop shadow onto the Hellboy like that. Yeah, that looks clean actually, that looks really clean. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I rate that. I rate that. Okay. So then what I did on this one, you can see where there's bits of the, the darker bit. I actually did that myself. That originally wasn't really there. Obviously, it was slightly because the text is what creates the blur. But um, if you need more areas to be dark, go ahead and select a black brush. Let's say, for example, this H. You can pull it down there. You could have you could have more dark there on that O. Maybe you wanted the E to be a bit darker. Something like that, you can do that and then you can do filter blur, throw the motion blur back on it. And then you can decide how extreme you want that to be. I think it just helps the text a little bit. I'm gonna merge both of these together now. So now I think something that's important is the lighting on these scenes. Your lighting is really, really important to create a good vibe. So what you're gonna do is I'm gonna select some orange and I'm just gonna start coloring like some orange down here, like that. Definitely get some red in as well. The red's important like that. Um, I'm actually gonna get some blue going on, but from underneath, just to kind of create a little bit of a dynamic vibe going on. So I quite like that. I'm gonna see if there's any blending modes that stand out to me. I really like this one. So, and I like the one underneath that. So I'm gonna duplicate that. And then I'm gonna select color dodge. And I'm just gonna lower the opacity of this one. I'm gonna lower the opacity. You know, just that low key lighting, very, very low key, but it just makes that image really feel like it's supposed to be the, um, the text, I mean. I'm gonna duplicate the text and I'm gonna drag it out like this slightly. I'm not worrying about the perspective here, it really doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna go for a Gaussian blur, make the Gaussian blur quite extreme like that. And then I'm just dropping the opacity down just so you can see that text in the background there. I think that's quite cool. Um, so yeah, there's little effects like this. You can go on doing stuff like this for ages. Uh, if you change the color of everything, you'll probably find that there's some text that actually looked even cooler than how you originally had it. But for now, I'm just going to saturate it a little bit more and I'm going to make it a little bit more pink like that. I think that looks really nice. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some more plastic to the top of this. I'm going to use this one, number three, because it has some really, really crazy effects like that. I'm going to lift it right up and I'm going to go through the layer modes until I find one that just sits nicely on top. Something like that. Look how crazy that looks, the way it's kind of looking through. You can go for some really mad effects with this. I quite like this one, how it's actually leaving dark traces on top of the image. So I'm going to incorporate that very slightly like that. But maybe I'll keep it just off of the actual text itself. So I'll erase it from the Hellboy. Just so the Hellboy really, really pops, but everything around it kind of doesn't. So there, I think that's quite nice. And then I'm going to throw another plastic layer back on top and go for one of the lighter ones like that. That's cool. And we'll, we'll flip it around so that it's not like contrasting with the effect that we had before. And I'm just going to drop the opacity of that really, really low. So there you go, guys. This is my first effect that I've made with you guys. You can really do absolutely anything with this. Like I said, I think I recorded the process of me making this one. I hope I did because this is probably the most fun one to make. So I'm going to have it up on screen now as a speed up for you guys. Anyway, guys, if this has helped you, uh, drop a like, drop a subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. It's really fun for me to make. I haven't messed around with typography that much. Most of my logo work is normally image based and things like this are so fun. You can literally do whatever you want. It's such a colorful kind of messy, you know, it's, it's little projects like this that really bring my love back into Photoshop. I think sometimes with digital art, it can get a little bit boring and feel a little bit stale. You know, you miss that kind of being on a canvas with real paint, but this kind of makes me feel like I'm really doing proper artwork again. I mean, artwork is never not proper proper artwork but you get what I'm saying this is a lot more hands-on the way things move all the colors and stuff things are just a lot more fun you can really get a mood and a kind of energy and an aesthetic from this style of text anyway guys I'm gonna let you enjoy the rest of this speed art now listen to some music and I hope to see you on one of my future videos very soon I'm definitely gonna be dropping again very soon so take care guys peace